Welcome to the He's Got Issues Independent Comics Edition number 155.3. I'm John Cooney here to preview new independent comics being released January 7th, 2015, beginning alphabetically with Boom Studios and Escape from New York number 2. Between the escalation of World War III and being number one on America's Wolf's Wanted list, Snake Plissken jumps borders and finds himself in the seceded nation of Florida. While he may have escaped the USPF, Snake finds himself in the middle of a whole new level of political corruption. Next we have Feathers number one of six. A recluse boy born covered in feathers must help his first ever friend, a young girl named Bianca, as she tries to return to her home beyond the slums of the maze. They must dodge street gangs and child snatchers along the way, and perhaps together we'll learn the secrets to his mysterious past. We've also got Fiction Squad number four of six. It's only a matter of time before war erupts between the nations of Oz and Wonderland. Tensions are at an all-time high as crime runs rampant throughout the town of Rhymes. Detective Frankie Mack is in the middle of a ticking time bomb, and he knows it. With the help of Simple Simon and the kid detectives, he may just find his way to the maniacal mastermind in time. Next, we have Garfield number 33, Nine Lives Part 1. The journey begins with Cat Cave as David DeGrand of SpongeBob Comics takes us back to Garfield's first life during the earliest days of life on Earth. Then Carrie Smith of Plume illustrates King Cat as we see how Garfield got down in ancient Egypt. We've also got Robocop number 7. After bringing down the latest customized ED-209 monstrosity without a firearm or partner, Robocop is beginning to question whether he's being set up for failure. Only Detective Ann Lewis can see the pattern. Everything going wrong in Detroit and crippling OCP is stemming from one man, Killian. Next we have Uncle Grandpa number 4. It's time for a new issue of Uncle Grandpa starring me, Pizza Steve. Uncle G may be the uncle and grandpa to everyone ever, but he has a lot to learn if he ever wants to be the coolest slice of pizza to ever put on a pair of sunglasses and pull off the most wicked pranks. And we've got The Woods number 9, a new story arc. Having barely escaped their confrontation with the storm, the hunters have led Adrian, Karen, Calder, and company to their breathtaking home base. But just when they think they may have found answers to what brought them to this alien world, a horror from the teen's past rears its ugly head. From Dark Horse Comics, we've got Angel and Faith Season 10, Number 10. While Faith fights the newest breed of vampires to save Riley, she's shocked when she discovers the identity of their illustrious leader. Then in London, Angel calls in a favor to deal with Amy's trap. Next we have Ghost number 11. Ghost's fight against Chicago's criminal and supernatural threats has backfired, taking the life of one of her only friends. As her remaining allies struggle to piece their shattered world back together, Alyssa's impulsive decisions send her on a reckless trajectory of revenge. We've also got Ghost Fleet number 3. For the first time in history, the Ghost Fleet has lost a shipment in an explosive hijacking. But can Trace, blinded by vengeance, even comprehend the payload he's hauling? Can Director Ward do anything to stop his former friend? Their fates will be sealed on a lonely roadside. Next we have Hellboy and the BPRD 1952 number 2. In Brazil, Hellboy and a small group of BPRD agents investigate gruesome and bizarre murders happening in the shadows of a 16th century Portuguese fortress, but what they uncover is more terrifying than they imagined. We've also got Lady Killer number 1. Josie Schuler is a picture-perfect homemaker wife and mother, but she's also a ruthless, efficient killer for hire. A brand new ongoing comedy series that combines the wholesome imagery of the early 1960s domestic bliss with a tightening web of murder, paranoia, and cold-blooded survival. And we've got Usagi Yojimbo Senso number 6 of 6. If you saw the last page of the previous issue, and if not, why didn't you? You'll know that this just might be the most eagerly anticipated Usagi comic of all time. Prepare yourself for the final titanic battle to decide the fate of Usagi's world. You will surely cry, but will they be tears of sorrow, of joy, or both? From Dynamite Entertainment, we've got Army of Darkness Volume 4 number 2. Ashley Williams, Space Explorer. The Chosen One has been shanghaied to the depths of space, and now he faces the forces of darkness on board a high-tech death trap. Er, we mean space station. With the otherworldly power of the Necronomicon coursing through the station's computer system, the deadite evil is stronger and stranger than ever before. Next, we have Captain Victory and the Galactic Rangers number 4 of 6. The cosmic super saga of the decade continues as the Galactic Rangers risk destruction to find their lost captain. A legacy of violence catches up to our heroes, both of them, plus a special flashback sequence starring Captain Victory's mentor, Argus Flane. 
We've also got Chaos Smiley, the psychotic button one-shot. How horrible could the origin of Evil Ernie's best friend Smiley, the psychotic button, possibly be? Well, it involves Lucifer, mass murder, massive citizen complacency, the struggle to control hell, and the tastiest hamburgers your hard-earned 99 cents can buy. So horrible might not be descriptive enough. Plus, in a very special backup story, Heaven unleashes its own trinket to battle the Smiley. The Holy Bedazzler is born. Next, we have John Carter, Warlord of Mars number 3. Alien invaders have conquered John Carter's adopted world of Barsoom. John Carter endeavors to reach the occupied city of Helium, where his beloved Dejah Thoris is held captive by the invaders. But Dejah Thoris is no princess in peril, as she hatches a plot to escape from her captors and lead her people in bloody rebellion. Classic planetary adventure in the tradition of Grandmaster Edgar Rice Burroughs. We've also got Magnus Robot Fighter number 10. In this chapter entitled Lair of the Basilisk, Lasia has discovered a horrible truth that rocks her to the core. And it's all Magnus' fault. But that'll have to wait because 1A has a new mission for his son, Magnus. Free the Basilisk, a horrendous monstrosity capable of destroying the world. Next we have Red Sonia Vulture's Circle number 1. From shadow-haunted Stygia emerges an evil undreamt of by even the most depraved minds, the demigod called Sudek. Born of an unspeakable blood ritual, he is half-human progeny of the ancient serpent god Set, sent forth to enslave mankind in the name of his father and return the world to a primordial swamp. The newborn Setek leads a fearful army and uses powerful sorcery and manages the demonic war beast to break the will of his mortal enemies as he marches forth to conquer the kingdom of the Hyborian Age, defeating foe after foe until he crosses the path of an older battle-scarred Red Sonia, who has exchanged the life of a mercenary for running a school for sword maidens. Can Red Sonia and her prize students Lila and Zoanna defeat the evil Sutek and his private army of ghouls and devils with the help of a renegade Stygian priest, Sefk, or are the Hybornian kingdoms doomed to fall before the pitiless son of Set? We've also got Shaft number two. Every great detective has their first case. For John Shaft, that first case seems simple enough, but tracking down a missing person for his girlfriend quickly turns into a matter of life and death. With the bodies piling up, Shaft realizes he's in over his head, but can he stay alive long enough to figure out what's going on, or will his first case be the death of John Shaft? And we've got Vampirella number 8. In the second installment of the Accursed Story arc, Vampirella helps the Cabal track down the Good Doctor, a.k.a. the fabled Dr. Faustus. The hunt for the immortal alchemist takes them to India, where Faustus is working on perfecting his Black Rabies, a deadly virus that combines elements of supernatural curse and a natural disease, turning the humans infected by it into homicidal maniacs. Can Vampirella find the Mad Doctor before he unleashes the mutant contagion onto the population of one of the world's most populous countries? But more importantly, can she trust her new allies once they get their hands on Faustus' research? From IDW Publishing, we've got Angry Birds Comics number 7. When Red, the leader of the Angry Birds, is lured away from the nest by Professor Pig's newest invention, the Angry Birds' precious eggs are finally captured. Can Red and the rest of our furious fowl rescue the eggs before King Pig finally has the omelette dinner he's craved for so long? Next, we have Edward Scissorhands number 3 of 5. When mysterious disappearances rock Meg's sleepy suburb, the gaze of the town turns back to a long-forgotten legend, Edward. We've also got Max Maximize number 15. Julie's back, which should satisfy everyone, but only confuses matters further. Julie and Max fight, Sarah retreats into her tapes, and a prisoner discovers himself trapped in a holding cell with a suspicious little cellmate. Next, we have My Little Pony Friends Forever number 13. When Sweetie Belle gets sick, it's up to Big Sis Rarity to entertain Bab Seed on a visit to Manhattan. The only problem is the two seemingly have nothing in common. Will the two find a way to overcome their differences and find a way to have fun in the big city? We've also got Shadow Show number 3 of 5. In Shadow Show, acclaimed writers and artists come together to pay tribute to the work of the one and only Ray Bradbury. The first story featured is Weariness, written by Harlan Ellison, which gives us a look at the end of the universe as we know it. The next story, Live Forever, by Bradbury biographer Sam Weller and Mark Sexton, brings Ray Bradbury himself into the story as a young reporter unveils the master storyteller's secrets. Next, we have Skylanders number 4 or 5, a bi-weekly event. The brand new three-issue story arc Legendary starts right here. Join us for this special bi-weekly event as some of your favorite Skylander characters face grueling tests, outrageous challenges, and the vilest of villains to gain Legendary status. 
We've also got V Wars number nine. New story arc begins here. It's international intrigue as we dive into the V Wars on a global scale. The surviving members of the V8 are tasked to hunt down and obtain plans for a stolen vampire gene screener. In a world where anyone can turn at any time, being able to test for the V gene could have devastating effects if put in the wrong hands. And we've got Weird Love number 5. Our cover boy likes big books, he cannot lie. And you're going to love the latest issue of the unintentionally hilarious cult favorite comic book Weird Love. The editors, Clizia Gussoni and Craig Yo, who the 13th Dimension call the Masters and Johnson of comic books, find the most demented romance comics of the 1950s and present them in full lurid color for your repulsion slash pleasure. Just wait until you read a story you're sure to relate to, I Was Too Beautiful. From Image Comics, we've got Birthright number four. How do you adjust to a real world after living in a war zone for half your life? Mickey Rhodes and his family will find out firsthand as danger from Tyrannos presents itself on Earth. Next, we've got Deadly Class number 10. Even teens training to be the world's coldest killers need a day off, so Marcus and Maria hit the streets of San Francisco. But you know what doesn't mesh well with too much booze and heartbreak? A seething cartel hit squad. It's true. Look it up. We've also got Elephant Men number 61, Sahara, the Red Queen of the City of Angels, must deal with some demons. Next we have The Fade Out number 4, Sex and Violence in the Golden Age of Hollywood, Charlie's flashbacks to the war affect his work and his secret mission to solve a covered up murder. And remember, like all Brubaker Phillips comics, the back pages of The Fade Out are filled with extra art and articles you can only find in the single issues. We've also got God Hates Astronauts number 5, Behold the Mind-Blasting Conclusion of the First GHA Story Arc. The Space Crab Invasion is here. Can the Power Person 5 stop the Sea Life Armada? Flying Whales! Flying Whales! Next we have The Humans number 3, The Scars Brought Home from the War Are Not Always Visible, Plagued with Flashbacks of Violence and Death, Johnny Tries to Forget Visions of Fire, Bullets and Blood from His Time in Vietnam but the hooting calls of the Viet Cong fill his sleeping head and pour into his waking life as Bobby and the humans welcome him back into the fold. We've also got Ninth Generation number 1. In the future, there's no more natural death, no needs unfilled, and everything you could ever want is yours, as long as you're one of the ones chosen to live in this new utopia and you're willing to subjugate yourself to these new self-proclaimed gods with nines emblazoned on them. Do the ends truly justify the means? Is a utopia built on genocide worth the price? Aphrodite, Velocity, Hades, and the other nines establish fiefdoms in this new world and attempt to rule. Their internal clashes have escalated, but they are forced to put that aside as they face off against the relentless hordes of the darkness. The sins of the past have come to claim those who would pretend to be gods. The cybernetic future established in Aphrodite 9 and Cyberforce finally comes face to face with the supernatural artifact side of Top Cow Universe. Next, we have Nailbiter number 9. Are the children of Buckaroo, Oregon all going to grow up to be serial killers? We've also got Odyssey number 2. Odyssey and her crew are tempted by the deadly and dangerous Lotus Eaters, living sources of the most powerful narcotic in the galaxy. Next, we have Roche Limit number 4. Alex and Sonya take a dangerous trip to the anomaly while all hell breaks loose on the colony. We've also got Synergy number 3. In the wake of her father's injury, Jess dons her full costume and becomes a demon hunter. Even as the police close in on her and her mother becomes more suspicious that something is horribly wrong with this family and she may want out. Next we have Tech Jacket number 7. Tech Jacket's first victory is overshadowed by the fact that Earth is completely and utterly screwed while a strange visitor appears to make his personal life go bananas. And we've got trees number eight. Something is happening. There are shadows in the Chinese city of Shu, shadows falling across Sefalu and Puntland, the shadows crawling across the snows of Svalbard. Things are getting darker, and suddenly there's no one here and nothing underfoot. Ten years since, we learned that there is intelligent life in the universe, but they did not recognize us as intelligent or alive. From Valiant Entertainment, we've got Eternal Warrior Days of Steel, number 3 of 3. The Eternal Warrior's gambit to save an oppressed people has seemingly failed. Will he fall short on his mission on behalf of the Geomancer? With steel sparking and axes clashing in battle, the hero of countless wars since time immemorial may yet find success by laying down his weapons and yielding the fight. The field of battle will run red when this epic anthem of warfare and heroism by master storyteller Peter Milligan and Eisner Award winner Kerry Nord roars into its final chapter. 
out in trades this week, we've got Tech Jacket Volume 3 trade paperback. Zach Thompson, Community College Dropout, lives with his parents. This is who protects us from what lies beyond our world. But he's also Tech Jacket, the self-styled galactic guardian of Earth. And when a big-ass spaceship enters Earth's orbit, Zach will face the greatest challenge of his life. Collects Tech Jacket number 1 through 6. And we've got Must Read Valiant Greatest Hits number 2. Never tried a Valiant comic? Get hooked right here with 100 plus pages of Valiant's most memorable moments for just $5.99. Featuring James Asmus, Doug Braithwaite, Clayton Crane, Joshua Dysart, Brian Hitch, Matt Kent, John Lehman, Jen Van Meter, Robert Venditti, and many more. This is your chance to find out why Valiant is a must read superhero publisher in comics today with the second value price comics collection of Valiant's greatest hits. Representing Rye number one, Armor Hunters number three, Quantum and Woody the Goat number zero, The Death Defying Dr. Mirage number one, and Bloodshot number zero, plus sensational short stories from XO Manowar number 25 and Archer and Armstrong number 25. Start reading here to find out why IGN declares if you haven't jumped on the Valiant bandwagon yet, now is the time. Okay, so that's a look at some of the top independent publishers this week, but there's still plenty of other books out as well, so be sure to check out my YouTube channel at he'sgotissues.com to see both the Marvel and DC videos for this week, as well as my usual roundup of all my favorites for the week with a little more depth and insight than you get here. And if you like these videos, be sure to let me know by leaving a comment and subscribing. You can also follow He's Got Issues on Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, and Tumblr to see everything I'm reading as I read it. So until next week, I'm John Cooney. And I've got issues.